Hi, everybody. Today, we're very quickly going to go through early game tips and tricks, including a lot of things that the game doesn't actually tell you to help you figure them out more easily. This will not be a playthrough, as I'll be using some dev commands to more quickly go through showing you some of the information in a more time-efficient way. So, let's go! First thing is I'm flying in. It's dark and rainy, but I'm going to do my best to look around and kind of see if I can see where there is some water. I think there may be some over there to the left. Yeah, where the lightning strikes. There's definitely going to be water on my left. I want to try and find water um, for many different reasons. It's the coastline, right? So there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to want to find the coast for. And here I am. Hello! My newbie character. Brand new. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hi Adele. Hey MSG. Hey Kyle. Welcome in. Hi Sarah. I'm sure some of you guys can share some good tips and tricks for newer players as well. Okay, so. <clears throat> excuse me. So, when you first load in, the first thing that you want to do is come over to this little stone right here. It's called a Vegaseer, and you're going to hit E, and it's going to show you this mark on the map, which is for Ichthyr. That's the first boss. Now, there is more than one boss of each type, and there's going to be more than one Ichthyr, but this will at least give you one. It's usually the closest one, but not always. Here's your map. As I scroll out, I can see the big wide world. This middle part is spawn. That's going to be there always. We'll go over some of the map stuff, but I have a whole video on some good tips and tricks for the map, and the link is in the description down below for the video. So, after you have that marked, then you're going to start picking up everything that you can find. And as you pick things up, like that piece of wood, you're going to get recipes. It's like you're remembering these recipes, right? You also want to look behind the stones as soon as you load in, because there's always going to be at least a couple mushrooms for food. And... I'm going to run, holding down shift. Look, skill improved run. As you do things, your skills will improve, and that will make them more efficient and effective. And then there's going to be a couple raspberry bushes usually, too, which are good food. So if I look at my menu now, a raspberry has a yellow fork, which means that it's going to give me more stamina. A mushroom has a white fork, which means it's balanced between stamina and health. And if you see something with a red fork up in the corner, that means that it gives you more health. So right now, I'm going to eat both of these. I'm going to put my food over where I usually like to keep them. Normally, I would have potions up here later in the game. And I like to keep my clothes over here. And I need to keep my weapon there. When you start out, you have a torch. And a torch can provide you light. But it can also be used as a weapon. Well into, especially the next biome, the Black Forest. Because those mobs are weak to it. So that can be super helpful. To put your weapons or hammer anything away quickly, big huge tip here. Hit R. R puts it away on your back and if you're running and you want to run faster put your weapons away and you run faster if you need to get them out real quick because you see a mob hit R again and it'll bring out what you had out before 
Even if it's two things, like a shield and a weapon, it'll put away and bring back both. Torches do burn out, but they are easy to make as well. Hi, Kyle. Did I say hi to you, Kyle? I think I did. Hey, Monster Lord. Welcome in. Good to see you guys. Yeah, I decided it was about time I did um, some tutorial for the newer players. We have a, not, a lot of new players in the game right now. And, like, I mean, I have over 2,500 hours in the game right now. So, I probably could share some ideas that I've picked up along the way. <laughs> okay, so since I picked up wood and stone, I have some recipes that I can make right away. The stone axe and the hammer. The hammer takes three wood and two stone. The stone axe takes five wood and four stone. The first thing that I'm going to look at trying to make is the stone axe. Because the axe is a tool, but it can also be used as a weapon. I really like the club for early game as well, and also because that will build up your club skills, which is one of the most powerful weapons that you can use throughout the game if you decide to go the club route, because there are moms all the way through the game that are weak to clubs. But first, I'm going to try and work on getting a stone axe. So I need five wood and four stone. And I'm going to head in the direction of where I saw water as I'm starting to explore. If I mouse over, or if you're on the Xbox, if you control over the parts of the map that have been uncovered from the fog, it'll show you what biome that is. So currently we're in the meadows. There's a little bit of black forest right over there, which means it probably extends that way. I'm going to try and avoid that. And then click right down here to say visible to other players. If you're on multiplayer, then that will help your friends be able to see you. Okay, so when you fly in, Ooh, improved my run again already. You're facing this way with the Vegasir kind of toward you on the left. And when I was flying in, I saw water to my left. So that's the direction I'm going to run. And I'm going to pick up everything that I see along the way. If I want to get a lot of wood early before I have an axe, other than just picking it up, you can punch the little trees and they'll break relatively quickly and give you a couple wood. The yellow bar at the bottom. Oh, I got resin. I got resin. So resin will be dropped by trees and you can also get it from some mobs and it's used to create a lot of different things, especially lighting and some weapons throughout the game. I hear a mob. I don't have a weapon made yet, so what I can do is I can use my torch as a weapon. It also counts as a club skill, and you see it caught him on fire, that grayling. That's the weakest mob in the game. And graylings and gray dwarfs and things from the black forest are weak to fire. So that's handy to have. Right, I want to grab some more stone. As I'm continuing to go this way. I'm going to pick up everything. Those little yellow flowers can be picked up. They're used in some recipes. Here are some more raspberry bushes. When you're out chopping trees and doing whatever kind of building or fighting that you might be doing, really try to avoid knocking down any fruit bushes because fruit bushes will respawn the fruit. So you can continue getting fruit from them and it's used throughout the game. Even in later game, you'll want these for potions. So if I go on my map, I'm going to click this little dot right here. 
Why am I not showing up to myself? There I am. So the, if I you click this dot, it's going to leave a dot mark. And I'm going to put my mouse over where I am. The little yellow triangle is me. But instead of clicking and getting close to where it is, I'm going to go out of the map and right back in. Then my pointer is exactly where I am. I'm going to double click. And I can mark it. For me, I'm just going to put an R for Raspberry. If you spell out the entire name of things, your map will get super busy looking really, really fast. So I recommend just using initials of things because it can get kind of overwhelming. Okay, here's some more stone and wood. And my buddy is following me. I'm going to go ahead and take this little guy out. I'm going to show you something too. Although I don't have a shield yet, you can block with different things. Now, because this has fire on it, he's weak to fire and he's scared of it. So he'll go away from me. So like at nighttime, if I have a lot of moms coming out around me of these type. And they're scaring me. I can pull out a torch and they'll keep their distance, the graylings and the gray dwarfs. But even without a weapon, as long as I have pretty good health, which right now is 42, I can block him just with my hands and I can punch, which is fist skills. Block. Now I parried him that time. Did you hear that high pitch? That's going to be a uh, higher damage when I hit him after it. Get over here. Fight. I'm waiting until I see him start to throw a punch. That's when I block. And that's the parry. And it also gives a knockback to them as well. Hi, Big Craze Wolf. Welcome in. Good to see you. How much wood do I have? I have 15 wood. I am going to go ahead and make... I'm going to go ahead and make my stone axe because that's what I would normally make. So stone axe is 5 wood, 4 stone. Now I'm going to switch that to my quick key. 1 through 8 are quick keys. And I have enough stone, I'm going to go ahead and make a hammer as well. A hammer is one of the most important things that you can have at any part of the, any, any part of the game. I keep it with me all the time. So let's go ahead and craft that. That's going to give me a lot of recipes. Let me move that to where I usually keep it. I keep it on five. How much wood do I have left? Seven. So, here is our first little structure that we found. Sometimes these have things on top of them. Like a chest that you can get things out of. This one doesn't. And I don't have enough wood right now. Or I would show you a quick way to break it down. I'll show you that in a second. In the meantime, I want to go ahead and eat something. Here's more berry bushes. Normally, I would mark all these berry bushes, at least on the opening island. But I'm just going to go through it quickly right now to show you. So mark them all as you go. Right now, I want to keep heading towards where I saw water. Because I want to try and find the coast. There's a lot of berries on this map. I jump. Jump skill one. Yay. Okay. I'm just going to keep going because I want to show you stuff. You can slide down these without worrying about falling. It's 
Sadly, you can't scale your unarmed skill by punching objects. You know, that is true. The devs took that out of the game. There used to be a thing where you could um, just like punch a rock or punch a tree and level up your skills. But they thought that was a little bit cheaty, and it was. <laughs> so you can't do that anymore. Over here, you'll find these areas that look like stones sticking up in the shape of a boat. These are Viking burial. Viking burial areas. Viking burial chambers. It's not a chamber. I don't know what it is. It's a Viking burial spot. And once you have a pickaxe, you can dig down in here and you can find treasures. It's usually at one end or the other or both. Okay, over here is a boar. And I, that sound was a deer. So here's a boar. I am going to sneak up and kill this boar because it's going to give me meat. And meat is very valuable in this game. You'll also find these circle, these type of stone circles. They're just cool. They don't do anything. There's nothing buried in them. They used to be used for something. Now I'm improving my axes skills. But um, that was in alpha testing. It, they don't do anything anymore. The good thing about hunting boar is that um, they may run away, but they'll quickly come back. Now you'll see when I'm sneaking that there's a little icon that appeared before me. It's flat. There goes my sneak skill. Sneak is a really good skill to have. So when it's low like this, that means that they're not really aware of me. But when I'm sneaking, I have to be super aware of my stamina bar. Because if I run out of stamina, I'll just stand straight up and I won't be sneaking anymore. Now I got boar meat and leather scraps. If you sneak up on a mob and you hit them from behind, then you get um, a damage bonus of large amounts. I don't remember the exact number right now, but you get a large multiplier. I got a boar trophy. Boar trophies are good for some things later in the game, mostly decoration. I'm not going to save it right now because I'm going to need my inventory space at the moment. Okay, I can see on my mini-map up here in the right corner that I'm super close to where the first boss Eichler location is. So I'm just going to hop here real quick to show you. This is what the first boss location looks like. Hunt his kin is your hint at what you're going to need. You have to sacrifice something at each boss location in order to call the boss. See, I can block and parry with my axe as well. Grab that resin. You'll make the sacrifice on the altar. It'll be a different altar and it'll look different for each boss. But the sun is getting low in the sky, so I'm gonna continue heading east because that's the direction, or west. Because that's the direction I thought I saw some water. I want to try and get some shelter. You want to try and get some shelter before nighttime, if possible, because more moms come out at night. Welcome back, Adele. It seemed like the water was closer than this. You'll find these little things, which are rune stones, and you can read them if you like. They have some interesting lore on them. If you find one about boar, then that's a boar spawner. Hey, Joker. Good morning. How are you? Welcome in. Good to see ya. Let me grab these stones.
Okay, if I don't find the coast in the next few seconds, I'm just going to cheat and go get to it so we can move along with this. Or if I find a building along the way, which I see right here. So since we haven't made it to the coast yet, but we found a little building, we're going to take advantage of this building. You'll find these little ruined buildings in different places. Come here, boar. All the biomes will have different types of ruins in them. He's going to char he's going to um He's going to headbutt and then he's going to charge. Over there are fir trees and pine trees. You see how they look pointy versus these are round. That means that's the black forest. So at this stage of the game, as a new player, you would want to stay out of the black forest for now. Now it tells me you feel cold. That's because it's becoming nighttime. If I stay out at night, I'm going to have a debuff from the cold, which we can talk about in more detail. Um, and also, there's going to be more mobs coming out. Now, I'm going to go in this ruined building, but I need to be a little bit careful and listen. If I hear a humming, then there's a beehive in there, and they will poison you. So you got to be a little bit careful. Now, I'm inside the building, so I'm surrounded by walls. I'm pretty safe for this point of the game. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my hammer for the first time. So if I pull out my hammer, the first thing that it shows is repair. I can click... Oh, yeah. The first thing it shows is repair, but I have to make a crafting station. So if I go into my menu under crafting it says to make a workbench I need 10 wood this is a point where I'm going to cheat to show you things faster because I have 8 wood on me normally I would have been gathering wood all the way along and I would have way more than 10 so I'm going to cheat right now just for the sake of tutorial I'm going to use dev commands And I'm going to spawn some wood in. So when I have 10 wood, I can build a workbench, which is going to give me a lot of new recipes. Hey, Wombat! Good day to you. Hey, Erica, how are you? Hi, Lube. Lube asks, is there more than one black forest? I just found one, but it is really small. Yes, Lube, there's going to be many, many black forests. And so you will definitely find more. Chances are that you'll find more than one on your starter island, even. Um, especially if it's small, you'll probably find another one that's quite large, according to most maps. Of course, every map is different, but definitely good chances. Okay, since it's night, and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to build a standing torch. This isn't normally the very first thing that I would do, but just to show you. It takes two wood and to resin so you can see in here better what I'm doing. If you build standing torches outside of your building that's fine but the mobs will attack them. Those are one of the items that the the mobs like to attack. So now I'm going to repair this building. I can click and repair everything. It doesn't cost anything to repair stuff it does take a little bit of stamina when you're repairing it. See, I ran out of stamina, so I have to wait a little bit for my stamina to regen. 
And my stamina is regening slow right now because I've had a cold debuff on me and I'm not rested. So those are the things that I'm going to try to attend to first. I don't need this super high part, so what I can also do is I can destroy these pieces. Whenever you destroy a build part, you get the resources back. So whether you're building something yourself and you want to do it differently or you find some, an old structure that you want to get some resources from, you can just break it down. They changed the order of this recently. I'm not used to it yet. I keep looking in the wrong place for things. Hey, Kongville. Welcome in, buddy. How are you? People! Lurking while working. Lurk away. The main thing that I want to get over me right now is just a basic roof. doesn't have to be pretty at this stage. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be pretty ever. <laughs> so I need a roof and I need a fireplace. Now the roof has to be supported and the fireplace has to have room for the smoke to escape or I'll be getting smoke damage. So I'm going to break out this wall because this roof is still supported by the side walls. A campfire is the simplest fire. It takes five stone and two wood. Of course, there's a tree right there. Let me get rid of that. So I'm going to use my hammer and I'm going to put a fire just outside the building. Now, that'll kind of keep the mobs mainly away from that area too because graylings and gray dwarfs don't like fire. I hear it out there, but it's okay. It won't get me in here. Okay, let me finish up this roof. I'm going to break those down because I'm not going to keep it that high and I can get the extra wood. Okay, now I have enough roof over me that you can see that I have shelter and I'm near a fire, so I'm not getting the cold debuff anymore. They throw rocks. Gray dwarfs do. Gray dwarfs are coming out at night. They're a higher level than the graylings. I want to be able to catch some rocks and throw back at them. <laughs> Uh, there's a tree in this house. Let's get that out of there. And then go. And I'll finish my roof. Just as a quick, easy tip, when you're building, if it's the wrong way, like eight turns to get to the other side. It's faster. And I'm going to put a little fire break here just so I don't walk into the fire because I will get damaged by walking into the fire. So avoid that.
Okay, so now I'm resting. I have a roof over my head. I'm under a shelter and I have a fire. So I'm getting a rested bonus. It just went away for some odd reason. Even though I didn't move. That was weird. Okay, we'll come back to that. So, in the little ruins, or... Oh, the mob's close by, you're right. In the little ruins or buildings, you'll find these chests, and inside chests are useful items, like amber, which is money, another torch. You can find different kinds of things in there. You can also use your hammer to break chests, and it'll give you tin wood, just like it costs tin wood, to make a chest. Now, I'm going to go ahead and build a bed here. It's really important to have a bed built with you wherever you go because when you build a bed, you claim it. Right now, it's unclaimed, so it's doing me no good. Claim that bed. My spawn point is set. That means that if I die, I'm going to respawn here at this bed rather than all the way back over at the spawn point. So it puts a little bed icon on the map. <coughs> okay, now it said that I'm rested. Comfort level four. So being rested is super important in the game. I didn't realize at first how important it was. I thought, oh yeah, it's nice to have rested. But it makes a huge difference to have the rested bonus up there. It increases your health regeneration by 50%, your stamina regeneration by 100%, your XP gain by 50%, and later on in the game when you have Eider, it does your Eider regen by 100%. So definitely keep the rusted bonus as much as you can. I'm going to go ahead and knock these guys out out here just because I'm tired of hearing them grumble in the back. Where are you at? Where are you at? Come here and hush. Give me your guts. Oh, I don't have any food on me. Don't go out with any food when you're... Uh, new to combat. Make sure that you eat something. I hear another one. Oh, it's a gray dwarf. So these guys are bigger. Moms. This is the most OP thing that you have in the game at any stage is the roll. I have three of them. So... The roll does give you invincibility frames. I have an entire video on the roll if you want to check it out. I don't know if that one's listed in the description. But you see, I'm, I'm being surrounded by three of them. And one of them got a hit because I wasn't paying attention. But <laughs> I can get them to follow me, roll when they're hitting at me if need be. And it gives me a chance if I need to get my stamina back or if I need to get away or get them to come at me one by one. Come at me, bro. So I can also walk backwards so they'll kind of get in a line. My issue is I usually get stuck on a rock or a tree. <laughs> So, let's take these guys out one by one. Don't throw a rock at me. Parry, roll. Who's closest? Parry. Oh no, see I got knocked back. When you lean backwards like that, you've been hit harder than the amount of health that you have. 
And so when that happens, if you get hit again, you're going to go down. See, that got my health down to six because I only have a raspberry in me right now. So I'm going to run around a little bit and let my stamina and health regen a tad. And then I'm going to take one of these guys out just to show you. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time playing with these guys. My health is regening very slowly. I could die to show you what happens. Let's try that. Oh, I'm surrounded. I died. Oh no, it's so sad. <laughs> We don't want a crispy crispy again, right? <laughs> Greetings and salutations, Nelson. Now I've spawned back at my bed because I claimed it and I don't have to go all the way back to spawn, run all the way back from spawn. Vic Viper, been watching your tiny home showcases and they're so fun. Gonna build one today. Awesome. That's great. And welcome in, Vic Viper. So I stood here for a few seconds, so I have my rusted bonus again. It's good to keep a chest with some food by your bed, so if you die, you can eat a little bit to run back to your grave. It marks your grave on the map now, thankfully. And so I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna run to my grave, and I'm going to be able to get everything back that I had when I died. I hit E and it takes everything because I didn't have anything in my inventory when I was doing my death run, my corpse run. So I had enough room to pick it all up. If you have a full inventory in your grave, then as you're doing your corpse run or your naked run, as we call it around here, back to get your grave, you want to make sure and hit V, which up in the left you see auto pick up off. That way you're not picking up random sticks or things on the ground and then you get to your grave and you can't hold everything and mobs are coming after you and it can be chaos and craziness. Excuse me. Hey, Paleo Man, welcome in. Take your torch out. Yes, I could have taken my torch out, Kyle. The torch would keep the, um, the gray dwarves farther away. You spin me right round comes to mind, right? <laughs> um, so, oh, it's already gone. So, when I died and I respawned up there in... The top right side of the screen, it said corpse run, and it had a little skeleton. So the corpse run lasts for 50 seconds when you die, and the corpse run gives you some buffs. You have a uh, jump stamina is, the, the jump stamina usage, how much you use the stamina is decreased by 75%, run stamina is decreased by 75%, and you become very resistant to blunt, slash, and pierce. During those 50 seconds, you get a 10 health per second tick with a carry weight of 150. Bonus. So it's basically giving you buffs to help you get your grave back if you're like in a really intense combat situation and there's a lot of battling still going on around there it'll help you to get to your grave and get it back faster and then see right now i have in the top right corner i have a no skill drain with the skull and crossbones that means that if i die again right now i won't lose any of my skills during that time and that'll last for 10 minutes because as I was, you could see that I was increasing my skills as I played the game and did things. 
you can look at your skills up here. The compendium is things that you have picked up and learned about. The second one is skills. The third one is trophies you found. And the swords is for friendly fire of if another player shoots you like players sometimes accidentally do in Ravenheim, which is my uh, playthrough with other content creators. It won't affect you, but if you cross the swords, it's enabled and it will affect you like a normal weapon. So if we look at our skills, these are the skills we've started developing so far. The yellow is what your skill level is at the red which is kind of hard to see right now um because my skills are so new and low the red is your progress towards the next level up and you do re re you lose five percent of your skills whenever you die so you want to try and avoid dying as much as you can typically <laughs> Okay, so my weapon axe tool is damaged. My hammer's tool, my clothes are damaged. You don't have to replace things whenever they get very damaged or broken. You can come look at your workbench. And there's going to be all kinds of things you can do at the workbench. Here on the left is this yellow blinking hammer. This is repair an item. If you just click this a bunch of times, it'll repair everything in your inventory that it can. Now this is a level one workbench. As you upgrade it, you'll be able to create higher level items and you'll also be able to upgrade higher level items and you'll be able to repair higher level items. So don't throw things out that are damaged or broken. Just repair it. Adele, high, dying is my highest skill. <laughs> okay, so I have found a shelter. I'm going to go ahead and look at my map. I'm going to get rid of this death marker because I don't want it clogging things up and confusing me. I'm going to click on the house icon and I'm going to double click here and I'm going to label this as my first base. I think it's really important to make sure and mark where your base is, even though it was showing the icon of where your bed is, because as you travel farther, then you'll put a bed somewhere else so that you don't have to run as far back to sleep or if you die. But you still want to keep track of where this is because you may have things stored here or you might be running somewhere nearby and it's good to know that it's there that you can run and get shelter, rest, sleep if you need to. Hey Nelson, mine too. In group game, I die at least once per session. <laughs> How long is a session? The session is 20 minutes. That might be an issue. <laughs> but sessions, you know, eight hours. No biggie. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I really want to build. Oh, wait, I still have dev commands on. So I want to get that off. I'm going to spawn in a little bit more resources real quick, though, just to save time. And I'm going to turn dev commands off. Okay, so we're back to playing normally. If you, this, since this is my first little shelter, if you want to build a floor in here, you can. I'm not going to stay here, and I have limited resources at this part of the game, so I'm not going to bother. Instead, what I'm going to build... Why? Why are they still showing? No. Go away. I turned dev commands off, right?
Oh, let me um turn debug mode off and then dev commands off. If you're interested in how to do that kind of stuff, um, I have some information on, my, on it in my channel. I normally only use dev commands when I'm doing tutorials because I like to play for real. It's still there. Why is it still there? That's annoying. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to log out. And come back. Because I don't want to... That's going to mess up people that don't understand the difference. And why those things are there. So, um, let me log out real quick. And reload the game. And... You turned no build cost on. Oh, that's... Did I? I don't think I did... I didn't think I did. Apparently I did. Weird. I don't remember doing that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to turn dev commands off. Thank you, Wombat. <clears throat> hey, Just Rock, how are you? Good to see you. Nelson Hamstreet. Every two to three hours. Well, I'm sure there's somebody that could beat that. <laughs> so I'm going to go to my crafting menu and I'm going to get a cooking station, which only takes two wood to make. I'm going to put a cooking station over this fire. I recommend putting them this way instead of this way because when you put them this way you can easily put multiple ones and when you pull the meat off of the cooking station if you're standing at one end the meat will fly towards you and you can get five cooking stations on a campfire. This one's being weird. Let's try this again. I'm not gonna walk in the fire. I'm not gonna walk in the fire. Okay, so I start in the middle and then put two on each side. I'm aiming at the ground and then pushing it in as close as I can from the side. If it's red, it's touching something else and it won't build. It has to turn its real color and then you can place it. Aim at the ground and scoot it in as close as I can. And now you can have five on one. So I can cook ten meat at a time. And I have that many meat on me. So, I'm going to place them on the cooking station. And then I'm going to wait for them to cook. The bigger the meat, the longer it takes for them to cook. If it's done and you don't get it off, it will turn to coal. Coal can be used for some things in the game. But this is not a useful way to get coal. You don't want to turn your food into coal. So even though I'm standing at the end, I'm going to pull it off. It's going to pull towards me. And now I have cooked boar meat. Cooked meat has a red fork. It's for health. Paleo man, thank you, Christy, for helping Valheim noobs like me. Absolutely. I'm happy to help. Hey, Rain, not remembering things you did recently can't relate. Nope, not at all. <laughs> never. That never happens, right? 
Okay. I'm gonna build a chest here. And it's empty. I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna put things in it that I don't need to carry along with me while I'm traveling. Dandelions, I don't need to carry with me because they're everywhere. And I'm gonna store my money here because it's weight I don't need to carry with me right now. I'm gonna take my leather scraps with me because these are gonna be very useful in making um, early level weapons and defense, like shields. <clears throat> and I'm gonna keep my wooden stone with me. At all times, if you possibly can when you're out, it's good to keep at least five wood and two stone with you because that's what you need to make a fireplace. And if you find yourself stuck somewhere and need to hide through the night, having a fireplace uh, can be really useful and save your bacon. So now, it looks like it's night outside. That means more moms. So I am going to go to sleep. It's best if you can to sleep through the night when you're early on. Because then you automatically get your rested bonus done when you wake up. And you're not having to deal with more and higher level mobs while you're out exploring at night. And now we have day three. I'm already rested because I just woke up. I'm going to go ahead and eat something. I don't have to do it that way. Because it's on my quick bar, I can just do seven and eight and it'll eat. Now I'm going to go out and keep exploring. I'm going to continue going to try and find water. Looks like I'm running into black forest here. I don't want to run into black forest at this stage of the game. But I'll show you what will happen. If you run into black forest, it's going to tell you, hey, newbie. That's Black Forest. Don't go in there. And at this point, as a new player, you should follow that advice. Give me your guts. You know what I just realized is I have... In my settings, I've turned off the tutorial. I'm going to turn it back on. There's an option here in settings under miscellaneous. Enable Raven Hints. You can now toggle on and off. If you've played the game a lot of times, you may not want to hear or see Hugan giving you hints all the time. But when you're new, I really recommend keeping Hugan on. Because he gives you a lot of useful information. And there's a lot of ways that um, you can use Hugin to your advantage as well. Other way around, five stone and two wood. Did I say it backwards? <laughs> to make a fire, you need five stone and two wood. Did I say it backwards? That's funny. Okay, so... This is Hugin, our friendly neighborhood tutorial. And now he is going to tell me all kinds of stuff because I've been ignoring him. A tasty morsel. Thank you, Hugin. That's food. We'll get caught up with him. He's going to appear again. inventory wood and stone and it's adding things to the compendium as well you have crafted a hammer and see it will tell you then build a workbench so it gives you some of those basic things
at weather at night the temperature drops talks about the debuffs to debuffs to of being wet like if it rains or you get in the water which we'll talk about in a sec this is about if you die right you lose some abilities drop your belongings you want to spawn back at a bed Now we're at the Black Forest. Turn back. This is a dangerous place. You have wandered into Black Forest. This place can be very dangerous for those unprepared for it. Prove your worth by slaying Ichthyr. So Hugin wants you to slay Ichthyr before you go into the Black Forest the first time. If this is your first playthrough, it's probably best to do it that way. Some of us more advanced and insane people run there as quickly as we can but i strongly do not recommend doing that when you're new to the game <laughs> you can have a lot of death loops going on okay so what i would be doing as i'm going along is i would be chopping down these little trees because in the beginning with the beginning axes you get a lot more wood per swing from the little trees than you do from the big trees. Give me guts. I'm also gonna need the resin from Greylings or Grey Dwarfs in making shields and fire arrows and all kinds of things. So we do want to keep collecting that stuff. You can use your stone axe to cut down the larger trees. When you're cutting it down, try to cut from behind it towards an area that you want it to fall. The majority of the time, the tree is going to fall away from you. Not 100% of the time. I got seeds. Yay. Eventually, I will be able to plant trees. Now, I made a lot of noise near the Black Forest. So I've gotten the attention of the locals. A Grey Dwarf gives me not only resin, but stone and wood when I kill them. Something you do have to be careful about when cutting trees is that if a tree falls on you, it will kill you. It can. It's kind of a rite of passage. I want to make sure I'm keeping some stamina while I'm doing this. Because if need be, I can roll and save my life. Roll. Roll. Okay, go ahead and die. Thank you. Shaman. Fortunately, it wasn't a shaman. Okay, I also got a Grey Dwarf Eye from the Grey Dwarf. Those are going to be super useful for a lot of things. The first thing is portals, but we'll get there. Okay, so I, as I was saying, when you're chopping trees, watch out for where they fall. And it can also cause... A domino effect is they can knock down other trees nearby them as well. Also, you don't have to click every time that you're chopping. You can just hold the button down. And that'll save you some wrist movement. Watch out, watch out. It didn't get me. I think it's a rite of passage. To be killed by a tree in Valheim. It seems like nearly everybody has a die to a tree story. I have never been killed by a tree. Knock on wood. <laughs> okay, so 
my axe is very damaged. I'm going to go back to my house. I can see on my mini map or I marked it where my house is. So it makes it easier for me to find my way back. Yes, Hugin, I built a bed. A headrest for the weary. Sleep the night away in your bed and awaken feeling refreshed and full of energy. And it is a good idea to always have some spare equipment here. That is very true. So I'm going to go to my workbench and I'm going to repair everything. Hello, Hugin. I have built a workbench. This allows me to craft complex items and have access to more building pieces to construct with the hammer. Thanks, Hugin. I'm going to close the door because moms can walk in your house if you let them. Monster Lord, as soon as I had my first bow in my current playthrough, I was already hunting not just deers, but also trolls. I totally had more than just my ripped leather tunic. <laughs> That's awesome. Also died by walking into a fire. I have done that. I have died by walking into fire, for sure. Forgetting to eat while building and falling, yes. Definitely, I've done that. I haven't done it as much as you might expect, though. I think I've probably only done it once, maybe twice, which is kind of crazy. I'm, like, super paranoid about building deaths because I hear about them so often. Okay, so I have more things that I can build right now. I can build a wood shield. Which takes 10 wood, 4 resin, and 4 leather scraps. Something that people often don't notice about the shields is that you can change the style. But only when you're initially crafting it. So up here under where it says wood shield, there's a style button. And that's where you choose what style you want your shield to be. Let's go with red. I like red. So now I'm going to craft that. New item. Yay. I can also craft a club which only takes six wood. Like I said before, a club is a really good weapon to have because there are a lot of moms that are weak to clubs all the way through the game. So I, I recommend a club highly if you want to go that route early in the game. One thing that a lot of people like to make early is the crude bow, which takes 10 wood and 8 leather scraps. If it's your very first playthrough, then I think it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do that. I'm going to turn on dev commands again. Just to show y'all stuff. The crude bow is the first bow that you can make. It has a pierce of 22. Draw stamina. 4 per second. Block armor. 3. Block force is zero. Parry bonus 1.5 times backstab, three times movement speed minus five. 
I'm not super fond of the crude bow and usually I use some different techniques to get a fine wood bow first but if this is your first playthrough you should start with the crude bow for sure and then with only eight wood you can make wood arrows when you make arrows it's good to select them that that's the arrows that you want to use because you can end up with multiple types of arrows <laughs> One of the things that I'm not crazy about with the crude bow is because it's a crude bow, it doesn't aim as well. I, where's the deer? I heard a deer. I pull out my bow. Aim high if you make a crude bow. Right, just struck. It's going to tell me I made a bow. You have crafted a shield. A shield allows you to block incoming damage. If your timing is perfect, the enemy may also be parried. Be careful though, if you block too many hits, you will become staggered. The amount of damage you can block before becoming staggered depends on your maximum health. So if you plan on tanking a lot of, a lot of damage, you should eat food that increases your health. Heavier shields will block more damage, but will also slow you down. So that's the difference between a round shield like I made and a tower shield. A tower shield will block more, but it will not parry. And it weighs more, so it slows you down when you're running and everything. And when it's talking about being staggered, that's like when I hit the, um, the three gray dwarfs in a row a while ago and it knocked me backwards. That's staggered. And you can see my health bar going up a lot in the middle. What's next? Bye, Hugan. I hear a deer over here. That barking sound is a deer. Monster Lord, honestly, I landed more hits with the crude bow than with the fine wood bow. Don't know why, though. You're weird. That's why. You must be weird. <laughs> um, you know what before well here there's a grayling right here I'll just show you real quick so if you look at the four crosshairs you can see where I'm aiming see the crude bow you have to aim kind of high and to the right because it shoots kind of to the left a little bit so account for that when you're using a crude bow. It doesn't have perfect aim on it. It also doesn't shoot as far as other bows, obviously, because it's the first bow. When you're brand spanking new. Okay, we're going to move this along a little bit. So is it? Yeah, the sun was getting low in the, high, in the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and sleep and get the next day going. Good morning. Is it raining? Or just windy? Okay, also to... Do I have dev commands on? I don't remember. I think I do. Yeah. I'm going to cheat. Um, to go and find water faster to so show you guys. So normally during this time I'd be chopping down trees and picking up stones and killing boar and deer along the way as I quickly find water. I ran into the black forest. I'm going to go back out. I wouldn't want to go into the black forest right now. It's my house. Okay, let's go this way. 
Hello, here's water. Okay. I didn't go far enough to the left. So, I'm watching my stamina as I run. Oh, whoops, look, I ran out of stamina and then I got attacked by boars. That's why I always try to keep a little bit of stamina. I'm gonna pull out my club and my shield. Can parry. Oof. Health is getting low. I need to be careful. I'm dead. <laughs> uh, kind of forget after you haven't played a noob character for a while that you can die to a boar. <laughs> Okay, so I spawned back at my bed. I didn't leave any food here. I should have left some food here so I'd have a little bit more. I'm going to wait for 20 seconds so that I get my rested buff. Now I have my rested buff. Of your mom. <clears throat> and I'm going to cheat. And go back over there just to show you. Where's my grave? It shows right here. I can click where it is and ping the map. And it'll show me what direction to go. Okay, got everything. My clothes back on, sad as they are. Oh, I didn't eat anything. I'm gonna roll. Eat. Get some health and stamina. Where'd he go? Come back here. I want to eat you. Thank you. Was there another one? I guess not. Okay, so I would mark these raspberries on the map. Hey, we found water. It's a little fence over here. Is there anything in here? Nope. These big giant trees are oak trees. You can't chop these trees. Or... The white trees, birch trees, until you have a metal axe. So, the reason that I wanted to find water is because along the coast or along riverbeds, creek beds, you'll find flint. And flint is a higher level material than stone. It's also going to give you the ability to do your first upgrade on your workbench. Also, finding the water helps you to kind of outline the island that you're on. Ooh, a fish. Luck. Yay! So, 
So, I go along the coast. Initially, when I'm trying to figure out what my island is like. Here is another building. Do I hear bees? No, so I'm not going to get poisoned. Since I don't have a base near the water, I would change and make this a base. Because it's right near the water, it's, it's in the meadows, and it even has a big clearing right there. This would be an excellent location for an initial base in Valheim. For a new player. What you do when you find one of these is you can put your workbench inside. You, your workbench has to be inside. It has to, no, scratch that. Your workbench has to have a roof over it for you to be able to use it. If I came across one of these and I didn't want to build in it, I'm on a different level of ground than him. That's why I wasn't hitting him. You have to be on the same level. If I wasn't going to use it, I could just build a workbench and then use my hammer to destroy the building. And I would get all of the mats from the building. So that's a quick and easy way to get some wood. And you can do that with any of the wooden structures around. Yeah, yeah, I found coins. Coins and fine stones are going to be useful when you find the trader. There are four traders. Four potential traders on every map. So, <clears throat> on every map throughout the world, there are four locations that the trader could be. Once you discover a location of a trader, then that's where the trader stays and the rest of them disappear. Okay, so we'll turn this into a base. Give myself a roof. And a door. I personally, I would not put this door in here like this, the little wood door with just that beam on the top. You can, but sometimes you can get stuck. So if you're going to use the little wood door, I prefer to put an X over it. It just gives you a little bit more space to walk through. Very important to remember to make a bed. Because if we die, if you die, you'd be going all the way back over to the other base when you woke up. And now if I die, I'll be right here. Only four? I think I have seen more. Really, Nelson? I could double check that, but I think there's only four. Uh, 
Uh, I'm immediately going to build me some storage. I'm going to do two different types of storage. I'm going to put one to store generic things in. And I'm going to build one for materials for building and crafting. So I can store my grid orifies. I don't need those yet. And my money, I don't need those yet. I'm going to need to cook. So I'm going to knock out a wall. See how it's doing that shake thing? If you move a little bit, it'll usually stop. I'm going to scoot my bed over a tad so it's not putting me too close to the workbench. I'm in a tight space. That's what's making it happen. I can make a hoe with five wood and two stone. Which is going to allow me to level the ground. Remember I told you that they could get in your house? Get out of here. Stop it. Come here, candle wax. We have these extra parts on this house I don't need. Oh, really? It can be more Nelson. Thanks for checking that. Cool. So I'm going to use the hoe to level the ground. Leveling the ground makes it much easier for building and for making things just see, be more organized and clear. It does take stamina to level the ground, so you can keep that in mind. Now that I have it leveled there and the grass out of the way so I can see, going to put down my fire so that I'll be able to get my rusted bonus and cook at my new house. I'm going to put a roof over the fire because if it starts raining, it'll put the fire out. But you need to have a full two meter or one wall high space for smoke to be able to escape. So if I want to make a break around this fire, this would snap into the wall, but if I hold shift, it lifts it up and it places it on top. That makes it a little bit higher. So I don't just walk into it. It'll block me from walking into it. Less accidental fire deaths. See, I got too close to the fire over here and I got the smoked... That'll kill you. See, my health is going down because I'm getting smoked. So you don't want smoked in your house. You want to make sure that the smoke is getting vented outside of the house. Hey, badass. Welcome in.
I'm going to throw a little support on here, even though I don't really need it. Just because it looks better. If you're trying to reach a point and you keep going on the side or you can't hit it, if you sit down and point up, you can reach that snap point. Fortunately, the devs are in the process of making some changes to the building system that are going to allow us to choose the different snap points. So that'll become obsolete soon, but until it does, that's how you can get it. I'm obviously just focusing on making this first little hut functional for what we need to do right now. I'm not working on making it fancy because I think at this point, if you're a new player, don't stress yourself out trying to make it fancy. Start out with making it functional. So now I have a roof, I'm enclosed, I have a bed, storage, and a fire to get my rested bonus. Those are the main essentials of what you need in your first little hut. How are you doing, badass? <coughs> Hope you're having a lovely day. <laughs> Little man is wandering around here. <laughs> You just finished it? Your first playthrough, Badass? That's awesome. Are you going to do it again? Okay, so... Where's that? I'm going in circles. The next weapon that I want to show you is the flint knife. It takes two wood, four flint, two leather scraps. Let's sleep and get some daylight. It's raining today. It's day five when it starts raining. In the initial days, it will not rain. To give you a chance to get your initial stuff sorted. And I just noticed on my mini map that I have not marked my house on the coast. I want to definitely mark my house on the coast. So this is going to be my current home sweet home. Midnight oil. What did I break? What did Christy break now? <laughs> everything. I broke everything. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a torch in here too. Furniture. Torch. So much easier to see that way. So if I come back at night, it'll be easier to see. I want to remember to eat before I leave. I hear a mob. So I want to show you the difference. Some people choose to start with a club, some with a knife.
some with a flint spear. A flint spear takes five wood, ten flint, two leather scraps. So let's go ahead and make a spear so that you can see the difference between these early game options. And it's not necessarily early game options either. These are the early game versions of it, but some people have their preference on these type of weapons and stick with it throughout their entire playthrough. I also picked up a fish on the shore so I could cook that fish. Whoops. Oh, I had meat. Forgot I killed some boar. Where oh no, I can't cook this fish. They changed it. You have to have a cauldron to cook fish. So I'm going to store my fish for later. And my seeds. I don't need to carry that around with me. And I'm going to leave a torch here. Actually, I'll leave them both now that I have weapons. Okay, so we have... The club, the knife, the spear. I'm not counting the bow in the options because everybody uses a bow at some point. Oh, and our first raid. So I'm going to eat, make sure my health is up. I'm going to use a knife for this. Pull out my knife and shield. I like the first raids. I call them food delivery. I'm going to go up here where my back is a little bit safe and wait for them to come to me. Here we go. I like the knives because they're very fast. It's a much shorter swing. Come on. More please. It's a shorter swing and it's really fast swing. Whoop. This is a neck. It's also part of why I was looking for water because necks live near the water. Come back. If you find necks, you could mark where they are because when you kill them all in their spot, they will respawn in the same area. Just like berries do. You missed me. No, don't calm down. I want more food. Come on. So I parried him when he went to headbutt me. I put my shield out right then and that loud sound was a parry. So my next hit caused more damage. If you see sparkles, that means something's laying on the ground. Hello, Hugin. You crafted a hoe. This tool is used for landscaping. You could say it is the perfect complement to the hammer. Use it to clear the ground and manipulate the terrain. It's easier to create buildings on level ground. That is true. Food delivery time, right, Adele? Oh, sorry. I had to sneeze. <laughs> I hear some money. You. Hush. Look, I have a berry bush right by my house, too. That's handy dandy. I'm going to use my hoe and level underneath the berry bushes because it makes it easier for me to see that they are there so I don't accidentally knock them down or chop a tree onto them or anything like that.
Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Huh? 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 That's exactly what I was doing. Huh? Huh? Um, badass. My tip to Valheim starter is first to make a flint axe and not stone axe because it is better and you can use it as a weapon. That is true. I made a stone axe first because I hadn't found the water yet. But as soon as you can upgrade or get a flint axe, it works better than a stone axe. Every time that you find a higher level material, it'll get you higher level gear and weapons and such. Think I may have cold. Did I have food on the thing? I thought I got it off. Oh no, I got it off. <laughs> but I do have some more food to cook now. I have two neck, which can also be cooked just like raw meat can. And I have four more boar meat. I'm not going to keep trophies in here clogging up my inventory at this stage of the game. Okay, so, and that's a good point. I have flint now, so I should make a flint axe instead of using a stone axe. So the stone axe had a slash of 15, the flint axe has a slash of 20, and everything else goes up too. And then I'm going to leave my stone axe here as backup in case I die, I can grab something and have it with me to run. Okay, so we'll look at the difference in the types of weapons. However, first, I need to take a bio break. <laughs> so, I'm going to give you guys a little game to play for a minute or two. And I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry, that took a couple minutes longer than expected. Get my food before it turns to coal. Had to uh, give little man a little bit of attention. Hubs is not here right now, and so little man is impatiently waiting while he's watching cartoons. <laughs> Hi, Tryun. Thank you, Monster Lord. Okay, now I have neck meat, too. Grilled neck tail. Meat, so it's also a health food. Boar meat is 20 health and 10 stamina. Neck tail is 25 health and 8 stamina. <clears throat> Triune, I started playing Valheim again last night, got three people together, and hopefully more coming. Fun! I love playing Valheim in multiplayer. I do, I do. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, too, since I have flint, if I look under crafting, I can also make my first workbench improvement upgrade for the workbench the chopping block takes 10 wood and 10 flint i'm in a very small space and this doesn't have to be inside the house it has to be close to the workbench but upgrades can be outside that'll go through walls it'll go through floors if you want to put it underneath Not Fent. Flint. So I can put my upgrade outside the wall as long as it's close to the workbench. You can see those little sparkly lines going towards it. So that shows that it's close enough. And now I have a workbench level 2. You can see what level your workbench or whatever workstation is in the star up here at the top. And so that will allow me to make higher level things and also to repair and upgrade higher level things. I can also make rag pants now because I have enough leather scraps. If you're brand new, you may want to go ahead and make rag pants. It only gives you an armor of one. I think it's better to go ahead and move on to leather. Instead of rag. And we get the leather for that from deer. So let's get this stuff out of our inventory. So it's not clogging up our inventory as we go around. I'm going to take these trophies out. And I'm just going to throw them away. Because I don't need to keep them right now. If you throw something on the ground. Within the range of your workbench. It will stay there forever. Because your workbench holds it stable there. So if you want it to disappear after a couple days, it needs to be outside of your workbench area. You can tell where your workbench area is by pulling out your hammer and trying to build something. And you see that white dotted line going around? That's the range of my workbench. So if I throw these down on the ground here, they're going to stay there forever. If I throw them outside of that circle, after a couple days, they'll disappear and be gone forever. So, if you're in a rush and you want to just throw stuff down around your base for a minute or while you do something real quick exploring, that's fine. It'll stay. But if you're out exploring and you throw something just on the ground in general and then go back later to get it, it'll be gone. Unless you build a chest. 
If you build a chest out anywhere in the world, you can mark on the map that you left a chest of whatever there. And when you go back, it'll still be there. And you don't have to leave the workbench. You can break down the workbench and take that wood with you and the chest will stay. More wood. Where's Hugin? What are you telling me, Hugin? I'll find him in a bit. Okay, so let's get some food in our system. I can do three foods now because I have three foods on me. Three foods is the most foods that you can do at one time. And usually it's good to do a mix of health and stamina foods. And you'll notice that each food has a time beside it. That's how long that food is going to stay active in your system. And your health bar will start going down when that food time is running out. And you can see right now it's going up because my system, my health is filling up with the food that I just ate. Triune, I don't want to interrupt your teaching, Christy. Last night, three freshies shooting fire arrows at a troll. Epic fun. <laughs> I bet that was epic fun. Even just the first time that you come across a troll, that's epic fun. <laughs> okay. So, let's go find some deer. We're going to explore along the coast initially because that's going to help us find more useful resources. I'm going to go ahead and get my weapons out that I'm going to use. I have been invaded. It's telling me about the raids. Monsters will lay siege to your camp from time to time. Strength of arms does not guarantee you victory in these situations. Build a strong defense to weather out the storm. Definitely you want to build defenses around your base as it gets going and especially as you get to higher level raids. <coughs> raids are kind of confusing to people in the beginning, I think. You can get a raid like we just got of the animals before you've killed any of the bosses. I call that the food delivery raid. <laughs> And each boss that you build will, each boss that you kill will change the type of raid that you get. So as you kill Ichthyr, the first boss, then your raids will change and you'll start getting raids from the next biome up, which is the Black Forest. And it continues on as you go. Just trying to see. It's getting dark, so. Let's go ahead and grab some daylight before we head out. Although I hear a deer. Oh, he ran off. Okay. Let's grab some daylight. So to get a raid, you have to have at least three base parts together. So if you have a workbench, a bed, and a wall, that's enough to get a raid. The game checks for whether someone's available for a raid, which means within that range of the workbench with three base items. about every 46 minutes and there's a 20% chance of a raid happening. So there's a potential of someone on your map getting a raid every 46 minutes. 
And this can happen whether it's you at your base or not. Even if someone else is visiting your base or walking by and within the workbench area, a raid can trigger. And if that raid triggers, it will stay persistent there until someone has been within the space of the raid, which shows on your map as a big red circle, for the entire time until the raid is finished. And a raid can last up to 90 seconds. Yes, Tryon, this is a new solo map. I started this map and this character just for doing uh, beginner tips and information. So this is a noob character. Although I'm not doing a full playthrough, I'm just going quickly through things. So if you see me using dev commands and stuff to skip ahead, that's why. Because, you know, I play vanilla, uh, but I use dev commands and stuff for tutorials. Okay, there's a bird. We're going to pull out our crud bow. I mean, crude bow. Oh, it flew away. So sad. There's a deer. Some people think that in the beginning you need to use a bow to get deer. This is not true. But bows can be useful for, get them, for getting them. I'm going to sneak up on deer because they're very skittish. Not as skittish as birds. And if I'm... See the lines are flat on the white where I'm sneaking so he's not aware of me. As I pull back my bow, I'm going to aim high and to the right because the crude bow shoots off. And I got him. Now this is going to give me deer skin and deer meat. Deer skin or deer hide, I guess, gives me the ability to make leather armor. As well as the next upgrade for the workbench. So, using the bow is the most common way, I would say, that people use, especially when you're newer in the game, to get deer. Did I get a trophy? Did not get a trophy. Deer meat is a higher level than necktail or boar meat. Deer hide is also the first item that you get that you can start making decorations in your base. You need four deer hide to make a rug. And adding decorations and things like that will increase the amount of rested bonus that you get. <coughs> okay, so... Usually there's two deer together. I don't know what where I went, so we're just going to keep running down the coast. Bird. Going to shoot above its head. And this is going to give me an invaluable resource, feathers. So now that I have feathers, I have a new crafting recipe of fire arrows. But I only have three, and it takes four feathers to make 20 arrows. So we'll keep going for now. So I'm going to explore the coast. If I don't find a deer house real quick, I'll start flying around again. I'm going to collect resources as I go. Two feathers for 20 arrows. You're right. I'm a dork fish. 
Oh, I'm a dork fish. More black forest right here. Wow, there's a lot of black forest. Really close. But I hear a deer. Oh, look, mushrooms. And a neck. I have these backwards than I normally do. It's messing with my head. Could eat another bite. Let's go ahead and do that. See how it went to a big eye over my head? That means that it was seeing me. But it's flat again, so they're not seeing me. I can practice my sneak. And see how they have that kind of radio signal thing over their head? That means that they're aware that I'm here. With the knife, there's also the special attack that's a jump. Super effective. There's a lot of mushrooms here, so I definitely would mark this on my map. I'd use a dot. Again, use initials. Don't write the whole word out. Your map will get so full of junk if you're writing the whole word out. I'm going to stay sneaking for a second because I hear a deer and I want to show you how to get a deer with a knife. I've played different ways and I think my favorite way, especially early game, has become to use a, a knife. <coughs> a lot of times I think early game it's easier even to get a deer with a knife than it is with a bow and arrow. I want to make sure that I'm not losing all my stamina when I'm trying to sneak up on a deer or anything because if I lose all my stamina, it's going to make me stand straight up and they're going to notice me. So I'm minding my stamina very carefully. See, the mob is aware of me, but he's not. I'm going to jump. One shot. Dead deer. Perry is very useful for those gray dwarfs early on, too. Because they hit harder than graylings. And I got my first deer trophy. Definitely want to hang on to the deer trophies initially. Don't throw those out. Because you're going to need those to call in the first boss. You are adorable, thank you. <laughs> Yay, first year trophy. Okay, we're wandering back into the black forest. And as a newbie character, you probably don't want to do that yet. Come here, neck. Uh, didn't get one. That's another thing with necks. When you kill them, you don't always get a tail. Um, badass, I did think about that. Um, I do that sometimes, so I'll show, like, if you're hunting for mushrooms, first of all, mark your mushrooms, because you're going to need mushrooms forever. But if you have run out of mushrooms, and you really need to find mushrooms, that's what you're on. When I mark my mushrooms, I usually find an area of mushrooms all around my house and I call it kind of my mushroom trail so that when I need them I can just go from dot to dot to dot and get all my mushrooms. Did I hear a deer? But if you're looking for mushrooms you can go into your settings, graphics, vegetation quality and turn that to low. 
and it takes the vegetation down super low, very flat. So it makes it easier to find the mushrooms because a lot of times you'll miss them in the grass. Okay, there's another deer. So let's show you what it's like with a spear. I am not a fan of spears. Just me. I think especially if it's your first playthrough, a spear can be tricky because if you throw a spear, which is the secondary attack, especially if it's in battle, you can lose it. And then you're running around in the middle of a battle without a spear, without a weapon. can block with a spear. Oh, I, I had my shield, so I didn't do it. It's, it seems like it's harder to get on the same level with the spear, so a lot of times you're missing stuff. I don't know. It's, it's just not my preferred weapon. Adele, to be honest, I play with low vegetation, prefer it that way. Yeah, I think somebody too. Some people do. But, uh, it's not only mushrooms, you can see rocks and other stuff. That's true. Yeah. Wood. Whatever. Animals. Necks. Some of the mobs are hard to see in the grass. Hi, Ovinomancer. Spears also have a really high aggro radius. Do they? I've never heard anything about that. That's interesting. Hmm. Monster Lord. I had several playthroughs and I always end up with my spear skill staying at zero from beginning to end. <laughs> yeah. I don't care for it. Some people do. Hubs likes playing with a spear sometimes. I know, like, Grimcore, the dev, loves spear. Magzag did for a while. I don't know if she's still using it. It's just not... I don't care for it. I like spears for decoration. To me, that looks like a pool cue. <laughs> they get for a lot of different kinds of decoration. I don't care to play with them. I think especially as a beginner player, they're trickier to get the hang of. It's not my favorite. So the other beginning one, as we said, is the club. <clears throat> the club is good because I think it kind of behaves in a standard way that you would expect it to behave. And also because... There are so many mobs throughout the entire game, even really tough mobs that are weak to clubs. See what's over there? Skeletons. That's in the Black Forest. If you're a new character and you're at this stage of the game and you see that, don't go over there. Just mark it on your map. I like to use this symbol for crypts and stuff. It's kind of over there. Uh oh, here I'm coming. Get out of my map quick. If I were you, I would hit R to put my things away and I would run. You can run away from them. You can, you can, you can get away. You can do it. Look, he killed a neck for me. Oh, it's showing you clubs. If you want to try and take a skeleton out early on, I'll show you how to do it. Thanks for the neck meat. Where to go? Oh, more neck meat. Thank you. When you run away, they'll go back to their spawn point. The 
the good thing about the low vegetation if you choose to play that way sometimes too is that it makes it oh he's a spear guy i'm gonna have to hide behind a tree for a second while i talk um it makes it easier to see where the rocks are so you're not getting tripping over them as much So I hit him enough times that he got staggered. They have an invisible stagger bar as well. And that gave me bones, which is going to give me the ability to make a deer cape right now. And more things later on. There's going to be at least two skeletons at any burial chamber. Now here is a super very important tip, not only for new players, but for everyone if you don't know it. If you come upon a burial chamber at a point of the game where you're wanting to find burial chambers, or crypts, or any other thing like that, that you're going to want to find them in the game. And sometimes, especially if you're not playing with low vegetation, let's put that back. Let's even put it to medium. These things can sometimes be hard to see. A lot of times you can walk right by them and not even realize it. So when you come up to these and Hugin is saying, look, it's the first time you've come up to one of these. This is a burial chamber and this is what it's for. Don't talk to Hugin. If you talk to Hugin and he tells you about the burial chamber, then the next time you go near one, he's not going to tell you about it because he already told you. But if you don't talk to him, then every time that you get near one, Hugin's going to go, hey, hey, over here, there's a burial chamber. So I never talk to Hugin when he's at a burial chamber because then he'll always point them out for me. Yes, that's one of my favorite tips right there. I love that. You use that tip. Awesome. The Hugin alert. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we killed a deer with a spear. Let's kill a deer. You're not a deer. Oh, now we're starting to rain. We're past day five. So now I'm wet. That's going to give me a debuff. Rude. Sneaking up behind me. If we don't find a deer pretty quickly, I'll just spawn some in. Thanks, Midnight Oil. I'm going to get rid of this rain. Did I do it? It's not going away. Is it going away? Oh, I'm not in debug mode. Yeah, I am. There it went. Just because it makes it easier for tutorials. I'm also going to set the time of day to daytime. Just because it makes it easier for tutorials to be able to see things more clearly.
Okay, there's a deer. So this time I'm going to use a club so you can see how you do it with that. Again, we want to sneak. If you look in the bottom left corner of the minimap, there's an arrow showing which way the wind is going. Some people think that deer can smell you if the wind is behind you going towards them. I've never found this to be true. I think that that is an urban legend. I'm going to do my middle attack. Or not. Missed. <laughs> Doesn't matter. As long as you're sneaking, you get that extra effect. The sneak attack bonus. Oh, that's right. This first club doesn't have a secondary attack. But if you're sneaking, one good whack with a club should take them out. Cheetah! Exactly. <laughs> okay, now listen. You hear that? That is bees. Jerk face. Where are you? Rude. You shall die. Roll. Make sure I have stamina. Let's parry. Or not. There we go. You too. Come on. I got a great dwarf trophy. Die! Give me your guts. Can't help it. I have to pick up the sticks. I must. Not as much as cloudberries, but you know. Okay, so when I hear the sound of bees, there's a hole. I can try and peek in and see where they're at. There's a couple different ways to get bees. If you get too close to a beehive, let me show you what happens. There it is up there. That's a beehive. If I walk too close to it, I'm getting poisoned. I don't want to get poisoned. So one thing that you can do is you can use your bow and arrow. And you can shoot it down. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you. If you shoot it with a bow and arrow, you can shoot it down. Another super safe way to do it is to pull out your hammer. Build a workbench. And knock the building down. This also gets you a lot of free wood. Now I'm going to get honey and a queen bee. Yay! This is awesome because honey is super useful throughout the entire game. And with a queen bee, and 10 wood, you can build your own beehive, which will not poison you. You can check the bees. The bees are happy. Yay! And over time, they'll create honey. They'll create four honey, I believe, every two days. So, the more bees you have, the better. They're using all kinds of recipes and potions. And honey on itself is a decent starting food. It provides you with stamina. 35 stamina, 8 health. So that's pretty decent stamina just on its own. So 
So, I'm going to take that home with me. MSG, I can see clearly now the rain had gone. I can see all obstacles in my That is very appropriate. <laughs> the small trees, you can break them with the club or your punches. That is true. That is true. That is true. Club or punches. What's in our chest? Ooh, money and flint arrows. Yay! I had flint back at my base, but I didn't have enough feathers yet. Or I didn't have any feathers yet when I was there before to make flint arrows. So to make flint arrows, you need wood, feathers, and flint. And flint arrows are, I would say, one of the most versatile arrow in the game. I use them throughout the game just for regular stuff. Because they're easy, they have a decent pierce of 27. Once your skills get up, you can take quite a few things out with flint arrows. So, if I'm playing for real, I would finish knocking the rest of this down. So that I could take all the wood with me. Free resources. Quick and easy. Even the floor. And my workbench. Okay, so let's look at killing a deer with a knife. Deer, deary, deary. More black forest. There's a lot of black forest on this starter island. I would mark that on the map. Oh, I hear one. Hey, old explorer, how are you? I think I hear it over here. There it is. It's running away. Oh, it stopped. If a deer is running, especially early, this early, I don't bother chasing it. I'm not going to catch it. And... You stay in the area it started, it'll come back. I'm gonna do my secondary attack. Bam, one shot. Dead deer. Thank you very much. The deer did not have antlers, so I did not get. A trophy because it has to have antlers to give you a trophy. Do you hear bees? Ah, there they are right in front of me. Bees, yay! Show you the way to do it with bow and arrow this time. It'll tick them off at first, so stand back when you're doing it and give the poison a second to clear before you go and pick the stuff up. Now, if you come up on a little campsite area that has these little slanted wood structures, this is handy dandy good luck because if I put down a workbench and I break these apart, I get a new kind of wood. See that round log right there? It looks like that. This is core wood. I can't pick it up. 
Get rid of that trophy. All kinds of new recipes from Corewood. Corewood provides more stability in building than regular wood does. So that you can have more support, you can build higher. It's also used in some recipes. Including the next level up bow. So that gave me three core wood. Normally where you would get the core wood is in the black forest from pine trees. Where you at? Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No. Die. Bye bye. Bye bye. And I'll take my workbench back too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Occasionally on a starter island, you'll find some mountains. They seem to be on starter islands a little bit more. And they used to be mountains. Sorry, I got distracted reading. Comments. Uh, Monster Lord, I do prefer the flint arrows over the fire arrows. Because if it rains, fire arrows aren't that useful for attacking things like trolls since the burn effect gets reduced. That's true. Fire arrows also are not as useful in the swamp because of the dampness. They'll lose their fire effect except against the abominations. Because they are weak to fire and will catch fire even if it's raining. So I agree. I use I use the flint arrows a lot. Uh, badass extreme. Oh dear. LOL. The deer when it is alert and running away. If you don't chase it, he comes back after a while. It's true. It's really true. <laughs> because he's going to go back to his spawn point. When he calms down. Okay, so notice there's a runestone here and there's a lot of boar. So this is a boar spawn point. So killing boar with a knife. If they go too far up into the mountains, I'm not going to be able to follow them. Mountain! Ah! That music makes me jump every time, even though I know it's coming. Save some stamina. And I'm just gonna walk up and kill you. As you're out and about looking at boar, if you come upon a boar that is a one or two star, don't kill it. You'll want to trap it and breed it. Once you have a two star, it doesn't matter if you kill a one star. But if you don't have any, then you definitely don't want to kill a one star. You can start with breeding regular boar too, which I would do if I couldn't find a one or two star. If you come upon the mountains at this stage of the grain at this stage of the game, definitely don't go in the mountains very far. Cause you will die. If the mobs there don't get you first, you'll die from the elements. So we can see real quickly. If I get very far into the mountains. This is a low mountain that's letting me go farther than a lot of them would let me go. You shouldn't be doing this, by the way. If I were you, I wouldn't do this. Why are the elements not killing me yet? This must be the lowest mountain ever. Have y'all ever seen a mountain that you go this far in before you start freezing? 
This is nuts. Look at this. Why am I not freezing? I think this is a glitch or something. I don't know why I'm not freezing. Okay. <clears throat> On a normal day, <laughs> without a glitch happening, you have a fur. I don't have a fur. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I mean, if this was a real playthrough, I would be like, yes, <laughs> success. But that's strange. That's funny. I'm like showing to people, don't walk into the mountains because you'll freeze to death. And then it doesn't freeze me. Uh, of course. So bizarre. So bizarre. Okay, so typically you could go to about here maybe. And you'd start getting the freezing effect. And you could freeze to death. The mountain is stoned, maybe. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> That's bizarre. Very, very strange. Rude. Die. Get all my scraps. Why can't I pick them up? Am I full? Ugh. Did I hit V? Why am I not picking them up? Oh, I've hit my weight limit. So, initially in the game, you can carry 300 pounds, units. I don't know what they call them in this game. And I'm too full, so I can't carry any more weight. So, I have to get rid of something. Get rid of that trophy. I do have two deer trophy now, so I could call in the first boss. Okay, so let's go back home. Gonna cheat. Why isn't it working? Game's being wiggy. Wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. Go this way. Hey, Panda! Welcome to your first live! Glad that you made it here. Eating food reduce your weight. Would rather to do that first. No, that is a possibility. Um in the water. Let me try and use my crud boat. And it's a one star, so I'm going to get more of all of the resources. I have a crude bow, so I'm going to be aiming to the right and above. And there we go. Um, you can eat to get rid of some weight as well. That's a very good point. Um, I'm carrying too much. Good. I wanted to show you all this. I threw out the boar trophy because I don't care about boar trophies at this point in the game. So I was just going to throw it out at some point anyway. Okay, so I'm carrying too much weight. Up in the top right, you can see it says I'm encumbered and I'm walking horribly sad and using up so much stamina and I can't jump and I can't step on top of anything. Hugan, what's going on? You need to lighten your load. If you carry too much luggage, you will become encumbered, slowing you down and preventing you from regaining your stamina. So even though I'm standing still, I'm not getting any stamina back at all. So if a mom came and attacked me right now, I'd be in trouble. Right, Hugan? Right. Yeah, I am carrying too much. If it's very low stamina, but you still have some left, you can pull out your hammer and place down, like, a stack of wood if you have 50 to make a stack. But right now, my stamina is so low, I can't even put down a stack of wood to get rid of some weight. 
It is the sad walk. <laughs> So I'm just going to have to open my inventory and throw stuff out until I'm under that 300 weight limit. And then my stamina will come back. Of course, I'm wet now, so it's coming back super slow. And I don't have my rusted buff, so it's coming back super slow. Now that I have my stamina back, I can pick that wood up. I'm carrying too much again, but I haven't completely run out of stamina. So I can pull out my hammer and stack wood and then I have my stamina back again I'm not overburdened hashtag sweaty viking shambles <laughs> what the hell was that flying thing you just did did wind catch your dress <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm using dev commands for the tutorial. That is uh, not a vanilla thing. You have to use dev commands for that or a mod, which, you know, I normally play vanilla. I just use dev commands and such for... <clears throat> tutorials or when I'm doing admin stuff on my community server that kind of thing content creation and community stuff okay so my fire went out I want to keep that lit so that I can get my rusted buff back and I would be able to sleep at night you cannot sleep in a bed at night if there is not a fire nearby I've been gone. I'm sure that I need to repair everything. Christy became Superman. Superwoman! Adele, HG for the win! Yes, ma'am! <laughs> Got some of my happy gamers in here. Supergirl! <laughs> Anyone have a recommendation for a dedicated server having issues with G Portal? I do, Panda. I uh, use get straight on. I used Host Easy, and if you look in the description of this video and all my videos, really, you can see a link to get a discount for Host Easy, and I highly recommend them. I use them for um, all of my community servers, um, and they are a sponsor, just for disclaimer. So if you use my link in the description, you can get a discount for them. Um, there's a lot of different things that I like about hosting Z over G Portal from different things I've heard from G Portal over the years. Um, there's a couple things that for me personally really stand out. They have really good, well, several, I guess. They have really good high-quality hardware, and so we don't have a, a lot of issues or almost ever any issues with their hardware and stuff. Uh, number two, I don't do a lot of stuff with, like, modding and servers and all that kind of stuff. And so the way that HostEasy has their... Um, website set up and how you manage everything for the servers is a lot simpler and it's a lot more intuitive than what it seems to be for a lot of the other hosting companies um, and so I really appreciate that and I would say the number one thing for me with HostEZ is the customer service because whenever I've had an issue that I had to go to them and say hey this is a problem that happened, whether it was from an update to the game or something else happening, uh, you know, with my community specifically that I wanted changed or whatever. They are Johnny on the spot right there. Like, I remember, I don't remember, it was sometime within the last six months, there was a huge update uh, to Valheim and it, it, messed up all the dedicated servers everywhere just across the board they all got messed up from this update 
<clears throat> and people were, were going nuts trying to get a hold of their server hosting company to get things figured out and fixed and whatever. And I remember, and I'm not bad mathing G Portal at all. I know a lot of people use them and are happy with them, and that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. But I remember people talking about how it was really hard to get a hold of um, server hosting companies. And with HostEasy, I contacted them and I said, This is happening, and none of my players can get on. And they like responded immediately personally to me to my admin we were in conversation non-stop they went out and figured it out and figured out a way to fix it for us and there's been multiple instances like that so i recommend host easy that's who, who who i use and i've been super happy with them so there you go check them out check them out man wasn't it the frost cave update um it might have been it. It might have been Adele. If so, that was more than six months ago, I think, right? Toodles, MSG. See you later. Thanks for hanging out, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, let me eat. Whisper's not here yelling at me. Eat! <laughs> Okay, at this point, I'd be leaving some food in these chests, too. So, if I die and need to come back and get it, get my grave, I'm not stranded without any food. I would also be placing my... I'd also be placing my beehives as soon as I get home. You can stick them anywhere. You can stick them on the side of a building if you want. They just gotta have open sky and some space. Wherever you put them, make sure that you check them. The bees are happy. The bees are happy. I usually put them on a post and just run alongside them to get the honey out. Honestly, I think that buzzing would drive me nuts being right there. <laughs> so I usually want them close to the house. I like to put them in the midst of berry bushes too because it seems like that would make sense. It says missing requirement even though I have the wood because I'm not in the workbench area. So if I stuck back inside the white line where the workbench is. Then it works. You gonna come over here and hit my bees? No. Give me the candle wax. Thank you. Uh, Monster Lord. I used dev commands only once in order to replace my maypole that I accidentally destroyed. Apart from that, I never used commands at all. Yeah. Thank you, Adele. I mean, it's not a huge deal right now because I'm just tutorial stuff, but thank you. Um, yeah, if you come upon a maypole, let me just show you real quick. They put it here. If you're out in the wild and you come upon one of these in a little abandoned village. Let's put it over here. This is a maple. 
There are only so many of them in the world. Some worlds don't have any. Don't destroy it. Because if you build around it, it gives you an extra layer of comfort. So now my comfort is five instead of four. So that's one of the few ways that you can get your comfort level higher than what is typically available in the game. Um, Panda, thank you so much. Yeah, we have a ton of lag for only three people and can't look at the seed we're playing vanilla. So no mods. I will look into it. And if that's the way we go, we'll use your link. Awesome. Thanks, Panda. Hopefully it works out for you. Monster Lord, I usually build small one meter vertical poles and place the hives on them. Look at that, great minds and all that. <laughs> toodle, toodle Sarah, see you soon. We're gonna get maypoles available again soon too. Yeah, maypoles are available once a year in the spring. So you will have limited time that you'll be able to build them. And I suggest building them while you can because they won't last long. Yes, woohoo, they'll come back. Um, and then midsummer we'll get the crowns and that kind of stuff back. And then, um, around Yule, we get the Yule tree and the Yule decorations. Your spring, my winter. Well, you know, <laughs> it's something somewhere always. <laughs> okay. So let me, so we did a bunch of deer hunting, right? So we could hunt, we could cook deer meat. I don't want to cook you. I already cooked you. I already showed cooking you. I want to cook deer meat. Why is my fire going out? Weird. My roof is high enough over the fire. So I'll cook some deer meat. And then I would take some of my deer hide. I would take some of my deer hide and put down a rug because that's going to raise my comfort from five to six. You can make different types of rugs, but the comfort levels don't stack. So you only need one for your rested. Now I have cooked deer meat. That gives me 35 health and 12 stamina compared to boar meat, which is 30 health and 10 stamina. So it is a little bit higher. So it's a little bit better meat to eat very early game. Long term, you're going to need more boar meat. And that's why it's good to start a boar farm. I would put some of my other weapons that I'm not going to use in here as backup to wrong chest. Not have room in there. It's fine. It's not a real world. And don't forget the Jacko turnip. Yeah. I love the Jacko turnip. I love making unique light design designs with the Jacko Turnip. My favorite lights that I did with the Jacko Turnip are in my modern house. I'm so tempted to make my house that I'm building in Ravenheim right now a modern house. That was so much fun doing a modern house. Okay, so I would go ahead and make the leather armor the leather tunic takes six deer hide the leather pants take six deer hide
Leather Helmet takes six. Once you get enough bones, which is five bones and four deer hide and a level two workbench, you can make the cape. Interesting thing about the capes in these game in this game, the armor is not that different depending on the cape that you wear. So a level one deer hide cape is an armor one. A level one troll hide cape is a level one. They're all gonna be about the same. So other than wearing it for the design look that you like or the effect that it gives, there's not a huge difference. Really, it comes down to the effect for what you're doing at that time most often. So I put on my leather stuff. I'd leave my old clothes here. I think that leather armor is worth making early game. I, I don't really think it's worth y using the leather scraps from boar to make rag armor. It doesn't have any armor to make a difference and you can you need the leather scraps for so many things early game. I don't think it's worth using them up on that. It's better to go straight to the deer leather armor. And of course, when I put a helmet on, my hair disappears. Or if you have a beard, it disappears. But they are in the work on that. And soon our hair and beards is going to be showing underneath our helmets and masks and hats and such. That's exciting. Lots of exciting new things coming up. Let me see. If I can. Check on something real quick. I like how it shows you the world save now that the world save is coming because it didn't used to do that and you would just like randomly freeze without knowing why so I'm really glad that it does that now to check this new feature on YouTube but I don't see it so I'm not gonna worry about it so much right now we want to use it right this moment all right toodles midnight I'll take off my hat I don't like wearing my hat when I'm at home is it just me it seems weird <laughs> Okay, I think that we're going to stop it there for now. And I am going to type in chat right here a link to go. We're going to raid Beeblebum, my Ravenheim friend. I might jump over in his stream for a little bit and play him. Maybe mess with him for a little bit. Would I would do that? I don't mess with people. I wouldn't mess with them. No. <laughs> but let's hop over there. Say hi. Say Christy Raid. And until next time. Happy gaming!